Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Settle It on the Screen for October 3rd, 2014. I'm Michael Sroka. I'm here with Nick Halsander. We're back, finally. Yes. It's been like years uh, since we've been on. With uh, Glenn Updike. How you doing, Glenn? I'm doing fine, buddies. Glenn, you're great happy back. Nice. Yeah, dude. Thanks. Thanks for holding down the fort. Yeah, man. man. That, was that was great stuff. Interviewing the new King of Khan. That was a very entertaining episode. Thank you, guys. It was fun. Aww. It was fun. Robbie's a good dude. I could talk to that guy for hours for sure. Do you? That's cool. Like, do you talk to him every day? <laughs> well, <laughs> in the Donkey Kong forms and like stuff like oh. that. Cool. I like that yeah. you. I like that you always take my questions seriously and answer yeah, them. Yeah, you, you take the questions <laughs> sometimes too serious. For this one. Well, not every day. If you guys want to check out that interview, it's up on uh, Blip TV, iTunes. Um, our show from last week if you wanted to catch up with the new donkey the new king of kong um that episode is out there for you to watch but welcome this week and uh, we got a few things where we got a guest with us ethan daniels he's getting loaded up here into tg live three um he's a competitor in the donkey kong community wouldn't you say glenn where, where does he ranked i'm not on the website can't memorize he's this up stuff. there he's definitely up there i know he's got what, what i'm excited to talk to him about in the 40s in the 40s. Oh, he's there. His, his okay. audio is <laughs> top 50. And uh, yeah. what I'm more excited, granted, our show is more about the classic arcade gaming and the classic consoles, but uh, we're gonna, he's one of the top, top players of Pac-Man Championship Edition uh, CE. I know it's a newer console, but the way I look at it is video, competitive video games needs to be all one show and that's kind of what we do here especially me uh, i like the original pac-man for the xbox three not the original <laughs> pac-man championship edition for xbox that came out in 2007 that's one of my that's my favorite retro remake games yeah that is out there came so up for the xbox he's gonna two. show us some skills here uh, later on about his pac-man championship dx versions where it's the game where you just eat a billion ghosts i mean it's just not stop and uh Ethan might try to get a uh, thousand ghost combo tonight, is what we're kind of <laughs> hoping for. That would be epic. Yeah, it would. If only. Yeah, we saw you do a pretty sweet one before the show. I had never seen uh, a ghost combo quite that big before, so. That was a, good, that was uh, a warm up. And, 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 and to see, like, your. Yeah, sweet. Is sweet. Your is scores the on the leaderboard. Is the video working or no? I don't see it on my end. I <sighs> I'm just, having, I'm just having one problem after the next with this. I don't understand. Hey, the audio's good right now, so one yeah. problem at a time. Yeah, so take your time. We, we got a yeah. few other news bits. Oh yeah, definitely. To talk about Excellent. here. So, so don't, don't worry. It's all. It's like I said. It's about the competitive. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, if you can get. The, oh, there you go. We got some video. So don't worry about it. Um, plus, I. You guys can see my great skills. Oh yeah, you're yeah. really good at that game. Not as good as. Not as good as Ethan. No, no, nowhere near. Now the original one. Uh, then, then you know we could have a good contest tonight if we if we played the original. Um, well, we're gonna do a little world record news here. I just got one. Uh, back in the we talked actually uh, back on the Twin Galaxies podcast day game days. Uh, we did a review for Duke Nukem Forever. Hell for, yeah. For 2K Sports. They sent us all this Duke Nukem stuff, probably because they need as most most promotion as possible. Which we were very thankful for. Yes, and it was an okay game. Uh, a cool. great game. Yeah, a great game, right. okay? We, we can go into hey, another it's, day. It's Duke Nukem. It's Duke exactly. Nukem. It's a Duke Nukem game. There's no such thing as bad Duke Nukem games. There's a, 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 a new world record of a speed run of... Uh, single segment which is not broken up it's just one run for two hours and six uh minutes by dumb dumb dugum trying to find out his real name but that's his game i was gonna say his parents really hated him no, didn't that's he that's a, a that's, that's a brutal name to grow up with yeah. you imagine being in elementary school his first is dumb dumb that would okay. be a bummer that's his gamer tag oh right? well, oh why don't you get a new console and like get it oh gamer tag? i thought i thought that was his name no no oh, sorry <laughs> what Minutes and zero and six seconds. Nick, um, you take you, you take gamers' nicknames too seriously. I do. Well, I don't know that you can't change your name. My gamer name is always Nick. <laughs> I my, my my tag. I just use Michael Stroka. I know you do. Except for so I thought everyone did. Except for um, things that I set up a long time ago. Like for example, on Twitch, my name is Timmel. 
Um, people still refer to me as Tim Oli, but, you know, Xbox, PlayStation 3, if you want to become friends with me, you really should. If you want, you can send me a friend request. <laughs> Everything's Tim Oli. There's a story behind that, and we'll, maybe we'll talk about that. Oh, yeah. You really explained wanna... that insanity on Twin Galaxies Forum, like, years ago. Yeah, but we don't, we don't <laughs> know why I'm told named Tim Oli. So... <laughs> It was ridiculous. I mean, like, I mean, it was awesome, but when you're like, I explained the story, it was like, why did you tell people that? Like, they're never going to talk to you again. So there's, um, there's some uh, good talk on the Twin Galaxies forum. Everybody's getting all psyched up and uh, recording submissions, waiting patiently for the awesome new submissions, which is going to come out. And I can't say when, but uh, it, it's, I, I think it'll be here sooner than before you know it. And it's going to be like two or three years ago where it's nonstop. Oh, a new world record. This whole show will be dedicated to announcing a world record. Oh, yeah. Like it's going to be awesome. So. Yeah. I mean, it was us digging up world records in the past. Yeah. The goal is to literally have too many world records to say all of them on the show. Yep. If mm-hmm. it gets to that point, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that's what we're hoping be, for. And it's going to be awesome, and more importantly, the competitiveness will be there for everybody. It's oh gonna yeah, be about drama. It's going to be about settling it on the screen. Yeah, bringing the high scores and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, the drama is just part of it. Yeah, that's well. You got to remember the dramas here now because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. Well, you don't. I don't mean drama as. No, can you believe what this guy said? I don't mean that. I mean like the drama as in holy crap! Did you see that score last week? It was sweet. Yeah. Did you see that zookeeper run? Exactly. Like, I mean, Updike? that's true. Zookeeper. <laughs> that will be the constant theme of the show. Zookeeper will always be the number one game so, on uh, the show. So, Ethan, Definitely. you're there. You don't have any world records on the Twin Galaxies board because you kind of were going to submit about two years ago. Um, w- before we get into the Pac-Man and Donkey Kong talk, what, what, were you, what are you looking to submit for or what were you going to submit for back in the day? So... <clears throat> Back in the day, I was going to submit for this Pac-Man Championship Edition game on the PlayStation 3. Uh, there was a, play, a PSN leaderboard that they were tracking for it, and at that time, there was pretty hefty submission guide. I mean, you know, whatever, that's how submission guidelines were, but basically I would have to, like, show the whole console before I would stream all the time, or play all the time. Mm-hmm. And the sessions yeah. just got long and tedious, and, like, I got done with a few scores... And then I called and I was like, you know, I better make sure I'm doing this right before I do all of them. And it, I just ended up, it was it was while I was in grad school and I, I just ended up getting too busy with school. And then TG changed hands a couple times and, you know, I just, I don't know, I moved out of, I moved out of Philly and then I started playing a different game. So now, I mean, ideally in the future, I'm going to be submitting scores for, at, at the very least, uh, this game and Donkey Kong. Someday I'd like to get a Missile Command score up. I've got a Missile oh, Command sweet. arcade machine. Five man? What's that? Five man? Yeah. Or five, five or ships? Six, or, or, or or six, 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 six cities. Man. That's funny because I always used to call it five cities. And uh, Victor, the guy from uh, Sweden, would always make He would always be like, you mean six cities, Ethan? And I was like, yeah, I mean five cities, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, five, five man is just the... Uh, yeah, yeah, like a track. Uh, no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to do the, the. I'd like to get good at marathon, like you know, good enough to be able to roll it over for marathon. But I also would like to have a six city score, because that's you know that's just like one and done. You do or you die. Wow, I've yep. not played. I have not unlocked it on the Xbox because my hard drive crashed. So I have to play uh, through them all to get to championship. I gotta play through them all to get to championship one. Man, that's my favorite. Yeah, that is the best. So, um. For whatever reason, now, like on on my sh- my stream, it's showing the preview of my my webcam, but it doesn't show it for you guys. And then when I switch over to my front camera on my computer, that shows up on the live stream. But when I switch back over to the other one, it goes to no video. So, is it alright if I maybe tr- try calling you guys back real quick or something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Try to re-log okay. in. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry about this. Sometimes you have to restart the computer or reinstall Skype. It, it happens once in a while. All right, you guys. Yeah, we, sorry. We, we, I'll be right we back. Got it. Oh, yeah, thank you, though, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, buddy. See you in a bit. All right. All right. So, Glenn, do you have any news? 
been kind of a slow week so far. So far. As... Joel West was practicing up for a hundred hours. On frenzy. Uh, on frenzy, yeah. He got in like twenty-two hours, I believe. <laughs> Which is what? Twenty-two hours? Like, what's wrong with twenty-two <laughs> hours of playing? Huh? The same game. The same game. <laughs> what's wrong with it? Hey, Nothing. I've done that before. Okay, Nick, what could you what could you play a video game straight for five hours? The the General Grievous game. The General Grievous. I game? did it once. Okay. There's this one game. <laughs> and it, it's it's not. Is it called General Grievous? I called it General. Call it no, it's not what it's called. There's one of these plug plug and plays that came. It out. was like the Darth Vader plug and play or whatever yeah, it was. You buy it at Toys R Us or whatever, <laughs> and it has two buttons and it's a Darth Vader um, controller. And there's this, Sweet. there's this game. <laughs> It's really loud now. Ethan, if you can hear me. Out again. Oh, they muted him. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, no, it was a game where you're you were um you were Obi Wan, and you were riding on. What was the creature that he was riding on in Episode Three when he was on Utapa? I can't remember what it was I called. Can't remember. The Bung? No, that's from Episode One. But, Whatever. He's riding this thing, and he's basically chasing General Grievous. It's it's kind of like um, was it? What was the game for Atari where you would just drive the car straight and you jump over it? Was that Bump and Jump? I don't know. Come on. I can't remember. I don't Anyways, I can't it was remember. exactly like that, where you would just jump over things and you'd nail things with your tail and stuff like that. And feasibly, this game like never ended. Mm -hmm. And I played it one night at your house for four and a half hours straight. <laughs> and I would refer to that night as the night I had a mental, a nervous breakdown at your house. <laughs> and the cure... The, Part of the cause was playing that game, but the cure was also playing the, the game. game. I got to that four and a half hour point, and I think I had worked through the mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was over with, I kind of felt this catharsis so maybe <laughs> come you, over me. Maybe you do have a feeling for what these arcade marathoners go through. You know, maybe they get to that breaking point. And you've experienced it. No, exactly. And I don't mean this at all to be mean, but you have to kind of be a little crazy to do it. It's like a crazy thing to do because it's like, it it's, it's more of a mental thing than it's all a mental thing. Oh, I don't yeah. even think the physical aspect of it is as tough as the mental aspect of it. Oh, yeah, by far. Oh, yeah. It's like because it's ridiculous. It really is kind of ridiculous to do. And no, and it takes a lot of <laughs> I don't know. Mental wherewithal to be able to sit through something like that. Because, like, for really, why would you want to do something like that? No, well, no. Well, and that's it right there. Yeah. And that night, I definitely wanted to do that. Yeah. For yeah, whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, but... So, you, yeah, you have played the game. Oh, I, okay. I definitely have. Oh, are you kidding me? I used to play Ninja Gaiden for, like, 10 hours straight. Yeah. What's the longest you've played, Glenn? 60 hours on Diablo 2. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Straight? Yeah, when the game came out with the expansion and they had the ladders first implemented, <laughs> it was a race to get max character, and I skipped oh. school on a... I don't... If there's kids watching, I don't recommend doing this, but I skipped school on a Friday and ended... <laughs> I started Friday at 9 in the morning and ended Sunday night at 9 o'clock at night. Wow. Dude, that's... Oh, Dude, my were God. Were you the first or no? No, I was in the top ten. I think a guy from Russia with a barbarian was the first. Oh, and then man. a guy from America with a barbarian was second. I wasn't playing a barbarian. Ah, so that was that might have been the key. Oh my gosh, dude. That's <laughs> like oh so we've all well, I haven't done it. Sixty uh, dude, I mean like I just said I played for five hours. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> but the longest that I have recorded is twenty six. Like oh, that's right. Video. Yeah. So what game was it? Legendary Wings. Dang, dude. But the fun, this, the one that's on my Twitch channel is 23, 
because I played it for three hours and then the electricity died and killed my game off, so I started right back up and played. Oh, you gotta have those battery backups. So it was I, the, but it's that, a battery it's backup. The... It malfunctioned. Ah. Uh, I was playing hard. and all of a sudden the power killed off on that section of the house and all I heard was the battery backup just beeping at me. Uh, you know what that was? That was your house saving you. <laughs> that was your house going, buddy, climb, what are you climb, doing, climb, man? What are you doing yourself, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was like the eighth well, time I smoke. tried to marathon that game, though, and always like something like that would happen. I, I remember I put the controller down, I looked at my brother-in-law, I'm like, I'm, this game is cursed. This cart that I'm playing on is completely cursed. Uh, Have you ever gotten through a game, you played it for like, uh, you know, I don't know, say nine and a half hours and then you thought you were trying to beat it and then you thought you did beat it and then you realize oh no nope there's another level here and then you just threw the controller down and screamed something did that happen to you nick it, it, it in fact it did it was <laughs> that 10 hour day i played ninja gaiden oh okay i uh, spent five about five and a half hours beating the final guy for what i thought was the final guy mm -hmm. And then I finally figured out how to beat the final guy. And, oh, lo and behold, there's another guy after him. No, I didn't even try to fight that guy. I just threw the controller down and just, I, I believe I went online, uh, pulled my game genie out, uh, and then beat the game. <laughs> in 15. Got, got the, <laughs> yeah, I'm pathetic. When, when all else fails for me, I just grab the game genie and beat the game, and then I never play it again. So. Well, I actually <laughs> have a no death run of that game up on YouTube. Do you really? Yep. Dude, seriously, I, I got to a point where I could get to the the first of three last guys without dying, but I could never get to the third last guy. Ah. I don't know. I, that was my, I never understood, like, I even found and figured out a way I could finally beat the first one. But the second guy, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know how, that game's, like, impossible. And it's not Ghosts and Goblins impossible, but it's damn near impossible mm -hmm. but you have beaten it obviously yeah oh, i'll tell what? you a funny story when i was going for that no death run two attempts yeah. beforehand i'd made it to the last boss and the last last the final yeah, final boss the, the third and final boss of that boss yes. run and i ended up dying oh god dude and i oh. i remember i screamed really really loud yeah that sounds smashed, right. smashed the controller onto the ground and then took like a walk for 15 minutes, came back, <laughs> had kind of a crappy attempt, and then the next one after it, I, I did it. Oh, that, that's impressive. I mean, that really is. Once I've thrown the controller down, it's done. I had a backup the controller, control. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you break it? Yeah, I broke it. Oh, nice. I was pretty the, uh, not happy that's... about that. Yeah, no, I did that once with the, the Tommy Lasorda baseball cartridge for Sega Genesis. I ripped the game out of the console, threw it against the wall, it shattered. Unfortunately, <laughs> the game survived. The game <laughs> That's the a launch title. Mike game. was there. That was awesome. Yeah, Mike but was there. I was there. trying to get stuff working here. I had a little problem with our chat. <laughs> that had nothing to do with the game. That was, well, I had obviously lost the game. <laughs> but it thing. still worked. Oh, no, it did. Did we plug it in without the case and stuff? Yeah, like you plugged it with <laughs> I, I threw the game against, of course, it exploded against the wall. <laughs> this is the, the, Glenn, the Glenn and Nick acting like assholes hour. Um, and I did. <laughs> And of course, I was like, you know, "Screw that game! They're playing that game again." And then, like twenty minutes later, I I came back down. The, they were playing the game again. I'm like, "What the? Did someone bring another card?" We're like, "No, we found the game on the ground and we just <laughs> plugged it in." I was like, "No, that was the point." Like, I'm like, "No, get a hammer, break it, <laughs> so we never have to play the game again." But now I'm glad I still have it. It's like taped up and stuff oh, like yeah. that. It was a good memory and it still works. Oh no, it, it's a great game. That's in, comes I love that game. There, there's nobody who's submitted a biggest blowout on Twin Galaxies for that game, and that's something I. Can, oh really? I, I might aspire to do that at some point here in time. Oh. So, um, Ethan, are you there? Are you having mic problems? I see your video, but he might have his mic muted. Yeah. I have my mic muted because I'm scared of the reverb. Is it still there? Yeah. Oh, now, now it's not. Wait, 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 wait. Don't touch anything. <laughs> touch okay. it. All right. Well, so it sounds good right now, man. Yeah, it sounds okay. Good. It. Cool.
Awesome. Uh, yes, I've been I've been listening. Just I didn't want I didn't want to kill you with background noise. It is a big boost, but it, it seems uh, Skype will do an auto microphone adjustment. Okay. I think you could almost turn the TV down a little bit, though. Okay. okay. Turn, you know, air. I know we so I, I wonder, does my voice get louder if I go over here? Is that louder <laughs> now? Or? That sounds good. You sound good. Okay. I should no, just turn the TV down. All right. Let me turn the TV down just a bit. I will say that this version of Pac-Man is probably one of the most addicting games to ever. Oh, yeah. Um, we're going to try to get Ethan's um, screen, TG Live 3, in the main screen, but you can control um, which screen you want to see in full screen at uh, TwinGalaxies.com slash live. You can control the camera, so uh, you can watch Ethan the great Pac-Man champion player tonight just by clicking on his camera um, at twingalaxies.com slash live. Uh, you can't do that from the regular Twitch page, but that's where you guys can uh, you can see his exterior play in full screen instead of us beautiful humans here. On it's over this way, right? I think. Nick, don't, don't confuse me. No? That okay. way? Which way is it? So I guess what's your first experience with this, Ethan? Um, man, I don't even know. I think... I think it was like a, a Sony special, you know, and it was it was on sale for like five bucks. And I always liked Pac-Man game as a child. Like I didn't, I, I never really played arcade games a lot as a kid, but I used to go play pool and bowl occasionally, and they had arcade games, you know, there. So a lot of times I would end up playing the arcade game. So I had like some experience with Pac-Mans as a kid. So I think it was like a five dollar download, and I just, you know, downloaded it, started playing it. And I didn't really get into it until uh, the beauty of this game is that for every every single event, every unique uh, level, there's a scoreboard ranking, and it'll not necessarily live update. Sometimes it'll take a half an hour, but it'll give you your ranking for that specific event. And what happened was I was just you know playing it for fun, and I ended up with like a top 20 out of, out of like 5,000 or 10,000 people score on one of the events, and I was like, man. That's pretty good, right? And then I was like, I, I should keep playing this game. Maybe I could get good at it. And and that was really what made me stick was that leaderboard, you know, the access to, I might lose it. Oh, that was lucky. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Game. It was like seeing a oh, ranking yeah. was, was enough of a motivator for me to keep playing. Otherwise, it probably would have gotten stale. And I'm glad yeah, I did fun. because this game's incredibly complex. Oh, it's so complex and it's so competitive. And my favorite part is what you're talking about, the uh, leaderboard rank. What I was aspiring to is the overall rank when you sign into the game where it shows yeah. on the bottom. It says the, it, it takes every single setting in the game and ranks all everybody's players. And I remember I'm like, oh, I'm 9,000. Oh, then I beat the spiral version. Oh, I'm like 6,000. I mean, that was the really cool part about that game. And like you said, this game is... I mean, for the, the the depth of it, for the amount of money you pay, is outstanding. I mean, even Steam had it on sale last week for like three forty nine or something like that. In uh, and it's, it's just yeah, it's just such a complex game. Like, there's so much stuff that we haven't even figured out. St you know, still like things that could be optimized, and that's the beauty of a game. There's you know, like I, I don't know that there's a you know a minimum time for every time trial. I don't know that there's a maximum score for every score attack. It's just. You know what I mean? Like it's it, it's not a static game, and you know, with a finite, or what would that be? I guess fixed interval. You know what I mean? It's it's like a, a continuous Fine. scoring interval. <clears throat> I don't know. It's great. Right. You know, it's it, it's like you have a strategy that works really well, and you're trying to complete something in a specific amount of time, and someone will do something completely ass backwards, 100% different. And they'll shave like 0 0.01 seconds off of the time, you know, or 0 0.03 yep. seconds off of the time. Are and if you never saw the replay, play? you would never know how they did it. And that's what I mean. Like the game's just so deep, and that there's always a different way to do it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You know, and then when it comes to the points too, you get one guy got oh he got he shaved that little bit a uh, little more time off, so he got six more pellets, you know, before the time was up and stuff like that. And that, that's what makes it real. That's what I was. Granted, there. I guess there there is a leaderboard, and I know they were hacked. But the original, you know, we're talking about Pac -Man, we're looking at Pac Man Championship uh, Edition DX, um, and that's definitely more popular because it's just 
a lot. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. You're just eating thousands and thousands of ghosts. I mean, it's it's so addictive. But I really got into it playing the first version that came out in 2007, just Pac-Man Championship. Um, there's not there's only four ghosts still, but the way the different patterns and the different little things you do make a huge difference when it comes to how much time you can complete and that, that's how i got addicted there was no there was still individual leaderboards but they didn't have that overall leaderboard aspect which i think makes the dx version you know just way more popular too plus it's on all the systems too i don't i think the original one is only on xbox um yeah well yeah. it now you can get it as a download on on the the PSN, but the controls aren't optimized. Something's wrong with it. Like my buddy used to have that game. So actually, yeah, I guess that really was my first exposure to it. Now that now that you mention it, um, when I was going to school down in Philly, I had a friend that lived down there, and I I didn't live down there yet. And like some days, I would go down, you know, either before or after class, and just go hang out at my friend's place. And he lived with another dude that I had gone like I went to high school with both of these kids. At any rate, we would play this game, and, and we, the, the championship edition, you know, not the non-DX, just that same course that you're talking about with the four goes. And they had the weird extra modes and stuff on there as well. But we would all sit there and be like, oh, who's driving out to get food? And we would have like a, like a five-minute score battle to see who had to go out and get food. Whoever got the lowest score would have to like do, do the work, you know? <laughs> oh, awesome. Grand rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, yeah. So, so when I finally ended up getting the DX game for the PlayStation Three, you know, when I found this level, I was like, oh, I already know this map, you know. So this was like the first level that I fell in love with on this game, and then that's what kind of bled into all the other ones, I guess. Very cool. So we got you got a favorite one? I think we're talking off air before the show started. Was it Championship? One is your favorite? Yeah, Championship One's my favorite because it's the most like a, an original Pac-Man, and you know, to get really high scoring on it, you have to basically eat four ghosts for every pellet, you know, and that that's like as close to high scoring on an original Pac-Man game as it gets, you know, like mm-hmm. you, even like the the really old ones were the last, you know, I, I don't know half of the boards you run you run the same pattern over and over again, and you you know you can't eat the ghosts, but like it still matters to eat all, you know, four per pellet in the beginning. And it's like, that's why I like that one, because it's like truly an old Pac-Man. Yeah, and then that, and what's really important about the championship one is you need to get every, all four ghosts, because that makes a big difference on uh, making the speed go faster in the DX, well, in all versions, in both versions, yeah. the DX yeah. and the regular. That is very crucial to make sure you get that fourth ghost because that point multiplier goes up and that makes your speed multiplier goes up and that speed is really important to get going right away. Yeah, and and, and, and for the time trials, that, that's actually a really another thing that, you know, like I want to say that, like, how I think the game's so deep. Like, there's this give and take, like, checks and balances system where, like, you trade you know, detours to pick up extra ghosts for uh, um, keeping your speed slow, you know? And it's like, so do I take the short route at a slow speed or do I, you know, take the detour and get my speed up really fast? And it's like, there's, you know, there's a give and take and you just have to keep doing experimentation and figure out what's the most effective or efficient way to have done it for that that particular run. And it's fun because you don't know, you know, you just got to sit there and grind for hours and like, think outside the box be like well this isn't doing anything for me you know what am i going to try now i'm just keep trying something different what are you going to try different and then sometimes when you try something different it like it's like oh man that pushed me back that's a way worse way to start it you know yeah (laughs) and sometimes you just don't know how to get out of that and sometimes it's tried tough to get out of your normal pattern or your normal flow because it's like oh but my normal flow is so comfortable but if you don't Mm -hmm. if you don't extend yourself out of those boundaries you're not going to get any further. For example, I think I have a score on Championship 1, actually on the Twin Galaxy scoreboard, of 528,000. But I could never just get out of that, my normal pattern. And I watched a few videos, like, I got to somehow get out of my pattern to to even, to even to break 550. You know? Yeah, to figure out a way to get past this and, and come up with something. You can do it. <laughs> you can always do it. And oh, yeah. another thing that's really good for that is 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 uh, sharing. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like I always felt like I, I was better at at like de- devising ways to get the points, but I wasn't the best at thinking creatively for time trials and that kind of stuff. You know, like 
routing and planning and 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 like I was saying, the checks and balances of of eating ghosts versus not eating ghosts. And the, the guy that the guy that lived in Poland, who like him and I worked on this game together. You know, we would like send videos back and forth and. I'd send him uh, emails, you know, broken English, and he would have to like translate them to Polish and then translate his <laughs> answers. It was great. Awesome. It was so funny. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and it's like, well, I, I don't know. I thought it was so funny. And, and he was like really into EDM, uh, electro dance music, back before oh, I even man. knew what it was. And I always used to laugh because he would like send me these replays, and I was like, man, listen to this music he's listening to. And you know, here I am, five or six years later, and I listen to EDM when I play Donkey Kong. So. Ah. It's almost ironic, <laughs> but yeah. What I what, the, the moral of that story is that I, I got to a point where I was stale because you know, like we're creatures of habit. You, you end up getting stuck in your ways, and you can't come up with new ideas, and then you get frustrated and you put it down. But it's like when you when you get someone like that that can help you, you know, you see the entire game differently. It's like, oh wow, you know. And then you see their run, and you're like, oh well, he could have done this slightly differently, you know. And then you end up in, in, or improving with their time and it just ends up keep going back and forth and back and forth so it's nice to have two sets of minds working on stuff like this so you don't get stuck in your way i know too that like some of my scores that i have when i when i bumped it up i was running a pattern and did something on accident that it just kind of improved my my score a little bit yeah i that was like uh, when we were when we were on skype uh, the, the event that I'm just doing right now, last night I was talking to you and I was like, man, I just improved a time by accident. I didn't even expect it. <laughs> and sometimes it seems like it was slower, but somehow it ends up having been faster. I don't even know. I don't know how it works that way. We you might have stuff. did something like get your uh, speed up quicker or something like that. You know, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, or, or sometimes you just get, like, really good randomness with the ghosts. Like, you know, like, they'll come at, they'll spawn in your path. Yeah. Four or five times more than they should have, you know, and you'll end up at speed 50 much sooner, and your score will end up higher, and it's just, like, totally not reproducible. And that's what's, you know, that's what's great about this. Like, you could, it's like DK in the sense that there's enough RNG in it that you're never going to see the same screen twice. So I guess that's probably one of the draws. And I think another major draw is that once you get to speed 50 on this game, it, it's too fast. It really is. Like, you get used oh, you, to it the more you play the game, but I think that that's oh, yeah. a reason why you stick. You know, like, because in the beginning Almost. you get to speed 50 and you just can't do it. And you're just like, no, I know I can do this. you got to keep going and keep trying. <laughs> it's like the first time you play level 9 on Tetris, and then all yeah. of a sudden you realize, you're like, oh, it's I'm in level 16 now. How am I even seeing this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's a great, yeah, that's a great analogy for it. And, 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 like, the fact that, you know, it's too much in the beginning, I think, is a part of what makes it addictive. Because, you know, it's like it, it presents you with a challenge right from the get-go. But, oh, without the, you know, you the goal is just like... You'll look at it at first and you literally will be like, this is impossible. No one could do this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a challenge where you'd be like, well, could someone do this? Like, why would they even put this in the game if no one could do it, you know? They don't want to make it too hard. Oh, my God, I saw My contacts are falling. Oh. <laughs> the, the contacts. It's always definitely the eyewear. It's hey, always the, the problem. Put the old one in. I, I'm probably going to steal that one, too. Must be the controller. That's going to be the next one. No, 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 no. I'm using the Xbox controller I always use. Yeah, that's why the old systems were the best. You could always blame the Atari controller. Ever played this? Hey, well, I could blame this PlayStation controller. I've burned a bunch of these things out. <laughs> In a Seriously, I, I have like a stack of like five or six PlayStation controllers sitting here. The joystick handles just burn out from like going around the circle. If have that makes ever... sense, you know what I mean? Like from the rotating yeah. joystick. Yeah. Have you ever played with a arcade uh, joystick? Uh, no, I haven't. I have. It w it was fun, but then it's just whatever control you originally started with, you know, it, it, is with better. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. I feel like, I, yeah, I would almost feel, you know, like naked I without my thumb, without this thumbstick. I, I just don't think I could react fast enough. Thumbsticks are quick, you know. Yeah. yeah I, oh. Even I like though the... I prefer joysticks, I tried it with the joystick because I have the version on Steam, so I could plug in my arcade panel to my computer. And yeah, that's yeah. Sweet. It was I couldn't get used to it. 
from all the yep. hours I spent playing with the thumbsticks. This is a question. This is kind of like a Twin Galaxies tracking type of thing. You know, we're, we're patiently waiting for the scoreboard to come back. I guess I kind of want all your takes on this, but uh, I think this game is identical. If, whether if you played on the Xbox, Steam, or uh, PlayStation, this game, what do you guys think for Twin Galaxies tracking purposes? Should it be all tracked as one game and not differ between systems like it is now? Well, the only the only thing that I would say about that, and I and I really don't know a ton, is uh, uh, you know about Steam because I, I'm not a, really a PC gamer in that sense. But mm -hmm. from what I, I I think I know about Steam, I'm pretty sure that it's all open source. So like I, I feel like there, you know there could be questions about what's necessarily going on with the Steam version of this game. But okay. I will say that I bought. I had a buddy's Xbox for about six months, and I I downloaded this game. I don't even remember why he had. He brought it here. So oh yeah, when when the new the most recent Halo game came out, my buddy bought it and then brought his play, his no. Xbox over here, and it just like crashed on the couch for like three days, and we played Xbox, and then he left it here for six months. So at any rate, I played through the whole game on Xbox, and I didn't notice any difference. Yep. So I would say for sure, PlayStation and Xbox are comparable. The Steam, the only thing that could be different is that, you know, I don't, I, I know that because it's open source, you could change anything. In yeah, theory. you can get in there and break it pretty much. Break yeah, the start speed, playing Tinkerbell. Speed, speed 50, yeah, exactly. Mm. Like you always could with the Atari. Yeah. You could always mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so, great, especially when you didn't realize that you could mess with it. And then you're like, wait a second, you're at your buddy system, like, why is this different? Like, I, I swear I'm good at this game. And why is this so fast? <laughs> not in my house, you're not. <laughs> Alright, I got championship one unlocked. I don't have my, uh, my heart, my hard drive got corrupted, so I gotta re-unlock everything. I finally got to championship one. So let's see if I can get my 550 at least. I don't let's know. Let's see. I doubt that it. That happened to Ben Falls twice, and then he stopped playing, unfortunately. Oh, That's why you should big... get the one on Steam. Ben, ben was getting into this game. I was really excited, and then, like, his whole save game file was corrupted. And he was like, I'm never playing again. And then a week or two later, he started another save game file. And then, like, a month after that, that one got corrupted. And then he's like, all right, now, for real, I'm never playing again. <laughs> yeah. Ben, if you're listening out there, I will buy you a copy on Steam. They're only, like, five bucks. Yeah, you know, you got a Steam account. And that way, it, it won't get corrupted. What do you think about the new uh, ones they released, I think, a year ago? I'm not quite sure when they were released. Um, I haven't played them. Mixed oh, reviews, no. I'd say. I like them. They're definitely unique and and different and fresh. They weren't necessarily thorough. You know, like if if they took the time to make the course and to make the course maps and you know to pin all the layouts of all the ghosts and set everything up, like for them to to only release the level with a five minute score attack is incredibly short sighted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the full maps. You know, if they release it. That, that would be my gripe, was that if you're going to make the new levels, at least release them under the same format as all the other ones. Like, put up the ghost combo, put up oh. the five-minute score, put up the ten-minute score, and the time trial. So, yep. for me, that's one drawback. But like I said, I, they're really unique, and I do like them a lot. The second drawback is that uh, you had to pay for them, and because of that, they didn't include them on the leaderboard. So it's like... You want yeah. to invest the time in the levels, but in the same sense, you don't. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I really want to play these, but then you, you feel like if, if you're still trying to improve your overall high score, then it's like, well, I'm wasting my time. You know, I should be spending my time on the levels that actually yeah, add the, up. One, the ones that are actually counted, yeah. I, I kind of got yeah. that feeling, too. So, Because I bought them on PlayStation, even though my ranking's higher on Xbox, and then I was like, oh, I should have bought them on Xbox. And it's just like, ah, yeah, oh well. I'm surprised. Why did you buy them on PlayStation? Because my place, because my I don't use, I don't play my Xbox. Oh, okay. I, like I said, the only reason I keep my Xbox is for Pac-Man Championship Edition, the first one, because it's only on Xbox. Other than that, I've actually switched all my, like all my favorite games from Xbox 360. I've actually traded them in for PlayStation, just because my PlayStation, I don't know, it's just. I just have, uh, I loved Xbox, but then after a while, just the new sign-in and verification, I just got frustrated one day, and I don't play Call of Duty anymore or anything like that, so PlayStation, 
And PlayStation has won my dollars the past, or PlayStation 3 has won my dollars the past few years because of the PlayStation Plus and stuff like that. Because actually, Pac-Man Championship Edition, if you were subscribed to PlayStation Plus, was free. Yeah. Uh, and granted, if you subscribe now, you can't get it for free, but um, it was a great deal for... That's why I have it on PlayStation, actually. So granted, when I stop my subscription, I won't have it anymore, but I would... I pay, I've paid for this game twice already so <laughs> oh, i think you're gonna say like five times. and i and i i've paid for the pac-man uh edition on um iphone and ios the, the pac-man pac-man championship edition uh, yeah I, I bought one of the the like the android oh. version of this game or something like that dude yeah suck i suck yeah, Tim is your game speed though, Mike. This is the lucky. This is the this lucky is level. I should be at fifty game speed by now. It's minute twenty-three. Oh, it's, it's impressive to me, man. I know. Well, what I'm excited for is when the scoreboard comes back. I think this will be competitive again, at least, and put put the true world record scores on Twin Galaxy scoreboard. I think this I like is one. That. Of, this is one of the newer games that translates perfectly to what twin galaxies has been tracking for years you know yeah, well, yeah to be honest this, you, this oh, was my doorway this game was my doorway into classic arcade gaming you know i was like oh man i really do like these kind of old old games like this what games did you play uh prior to this like what was the type of game you used to like to play man i used to play a lot of stuff i mean some of it was competitive but not like really so uh man i, I played like Tiger Woods game, oh, you know, okay. I, used to play, I used to play like that semi-competitively because that was online. That was probably the first online sort of game like that that I played. But, man, I remember, play, you know, in undergrad, me and my, my one roommate used to play uh, SSX Tricky. Oh, That's I love that. Yeah. Game. We used to play that semi-competitively, and we were like, <sighs> we just tried to beat each other's high score on Garibaldi, which is like that first big yeah. trick level. And, you know, we would just play until we could get like a 2 million, just ridiculous stuff like that. Uh, when I was younger, I played all the Zelda stuff. Terrible. And like Mario. And I don't know. I, I, I was never really a competitive trick, gamer huh? as a kid. I didn't, you know, I, didn't, I just played games. I really enjoyed them. Like I had, an, I was lucky enough to have a Nintendo Entertainment System as a kid. And my <laughs> parents, you know, they, they would take me out and let me get new games and go sell my old ones back and, you know, trade them in and constantly get new stuff. What's your, uh, what was your favorite system? Or what would you say is your favorite system? Just computer or? Man, um. Wow, look at all these questions. I know, man. sorry. Maybe loaded questions. I like, I like to ask I'm everybody these desert questions. Desert Island, you have to pick one video. Yeah, that, that's what I mean, <laughs> Desert Island. You could either pick a system, game, or a, a system or a game. Like, or maybe you like this game or this system because of this game or something like that, you know? I mean, I guess, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, it I, could I, be I this. It could be, you know, Pac-Man Championship Edition, too, if you'd want. Well, to be honest with you, I, I'd say the, the game, that, or if anything, there's a, a genre of game. I, I think the Zelda series is a game that I've appreciated more than any other gaming series out of, you know, anything. And, and to be honest, most of the Nintendo exclusive titles, for whatever reason, I've always had a lot of respect for, like, all the Mario games, all the R Mario RPG games, like the Bowser stuff and like the Wario's Castle on Game Boy. Like, I, I don't know, but like I was just a huge Zelda fan. And like, I'd like to think the Nintendo because, you know what I mean? Like the first Zelda game I had was on NES. And like that ended up leading me to play through essentially all of them up through the GameCube and the Nintendo 64 and the Wii. I stopped at Wii. I, I never got a Wii U. But and then I didn't get a PS4 or, or I don't know, but, you know, in the same sense, I could say it's this game because if, if it wasn't for me liking this game enough to actually get into it seriously, then I probably would, like, never be a part of the, the classic or competitive gaming scene at all. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Hey, shoot, I mean, you just said NES to Wii. That spans 30 years of gaming, so, or 20 years 20 of gaming. Years. So, yeah, yeah I, mean, it's I, a lot. I, was, I was lucky in that regard. You know, I was, like, five years old right when the NES came out, or six or seven years old right when the NES came out, you know, and I was lucky uh -huh. enough to get one. It's just, like, I kind of missed the arcade. That was, like, a little bit before my time, but now I'm, I'm getting into that. And with no, the emulation, just... 
that was fast. the same way. Yeah, it was about five when Nintendo came out, and yeah. I don't get me wrong, I always love the arcade games. But like me and Mike have talked about in the past, yeah. when we say arcade games, we're talking about like late eighties, early nineties yeah. arcade. We're not talking about Pac Man and stuff because we weren't born. I mean, they yet, were there. So. We played. Oh yeah, we played them, oh, but we it was we like were... there was Mercs and Captain America. Right, like those were way so better. Yeah, you know? yeah, like Virtua Fighter and like. Yeah. She's what else? Area Fifty One, like those kind of shooters, you know, or Street Fighter. Like, the yeah, Crimson Street World Fighter games we were obsessed with. Yep. Oh, you know, I like the I... Simpsons. You guys remember the Simpsons arcade game? That was one of the first ones I played as a kid. Oh, yeah, I spent twenty dollars at the arcade when I was like eleven years old. It was awesome. We beat the game. It was sweet. <laughs> yeah, we, we used to go to like bowling alley with my parents and me and my buddies, and my dad would just be like, "Here's a roll of quarters. Go play the Simpsons game," and we would just like. They didn't, you know, they didn't need to worry about us for like an hour and a half. Our eyes were glued to that game. We weren't going to cause any trouble. It was like the easiest ten bucks you ever spent. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, my uh, my cousin, my buddy's uh, dad gave us each like tw- ten dollars and quarters or whatever, and we spent every cent on the Simpsons game, <laughs> which is a, in hindsight like really there's like a hundred games there, and you just but when we beat the game, and it was like a point of pride for years. So it was totally yeah, worth. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, you, what you need to do, Ethan, um, on uh, Guinness World Records, um, I submitted a score you know, like two years ago, and you need to go submit a score and beat mine. Because oh, I got oh. a certificate in the mail the other day. Hey! I didn't know it was coming. Really? I have a Pan Championship Edition DX Guinness World Records certificate. It says wow. I am the champion on, uh, what do you call it? Championship one, and my lousy score is five hundred and thirty thousand. So you like came close to that tonight, eh? I got four thirty. What it's five oh. here for what it's worth? Five thirty is not that loud. Oh, here that's the wrong menu. Five thirty is not that lousy. I'm gonna go to the scoreboard real quick and see what five thirty would be on the PlayStation scoreboard for that. Yeah. Yeah. Not I, my that. guess is you're in. My guess is you'd be in the top. I could be wrong because I haven't looked at this leaderboard in a long time and whatever, but I, I'm going to guess you're in the, that's in the top 35 or 40 out of what? the 28,000 or whatever on this leaderboard. 35,000. I did it on Would Xbox. Would you say five? 530. What is it? 530. I'm trying to load it. Yeah, if you go on Guinness, you can – Guinness World Records Challengers, my video is up there of what I did. And, and actually the funny part is I think if you look in the upper right-hand corner, it shows – 540 because I've got really? before, but I could I never recorded five. Oh, you didn't have it taped. I don't I have it taped. I mean, you still that's like that's like in the in the top 150 out of uh, out of 35,000 ranked players. That's pretty pretty darn good. Stop. That's you're right. That's not that lousy. No, no, we, got some lousy. we got some questions. You can, you can prove it. That's a, that's a reason to, to revisit if you really <laughs> wanted to. Oh, yeah, that's one of my. I mean, this game I'll never get sick of it, and I will play it all, especially Championship One. That that one is just it's cemented in my brain from the first one, just the way the pattern is and where you eat the stuff and you I mean but what I'm saying is you need to go up there and change that score so then I will have to go back and go for it. That's all I'm saying. Because that's my problem is when I'm first on some leaderboard. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I'm first on TG's leaderboard. That's good enough. I ain't gonna play it. But then when somebody beats me, it's like No, I have to go back and beat it. So <laughs> yeah, all right, I like it. I get a score that motivate me more to kind of play. Like so was was that was that certificate you got from when you were like obsessed with this game a couple of years ago? When I, every oh, time I'd come over your house and actually you were playing it like nonstop. Um, no, actually, the Guinness World Record I sent to Guinness was about I think last year. I just oh okay, yeah, that is definitely and different. I was just since um, Twin Galaxies wasn't owned by the current ownership, and you know we can't. There was really no place to submit a score that would be considered a world record. You just sent it in. I them. sent it to Guinness's World World Records Challengers Edition, and it's a kind of cool thing where you submit your video and everybody can see what you did. Yeah. Um, so I submitted it just for fun. Just I didn't expect a world record certificate, but it was like a guy emailed the other day. Hey, what's your address? Bam. <laughs> mail and i got a certificate yeah, that's kind of cool that was pretty cool so uh now what they have on their website they only have specific challenges like certain um you know like they, they had a few blowouts for fifa and stuff like that they were just looking for information for their video game books kind of the way they were doing it but Th- that's a cool website though but for that when reason I, when i did this pac-man championship dx that's when i wasn't 
I'm not into DX as much as I was the original one. When you saw me playing the other one, no, I that's remember that. I was obsessed. With no, I remember that was was that like three years ago? It's like four years. Oh, ago. Was that that long ago? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, oh, I mean, yeah. that's all you. It was like it was like your it's obsession like after. Um, you know, it was worse than crack. It was worse than crack. Um, yeah. It's like <laughs> crack. Well, you know, you know, it's, uh, that's really funny because. I, re I read a game review once online after I had been playing this game for at least a year. And, like, I, I've never done any hard drugs ever. But the review that I read was, like, from some kid, and he was like, that Pac-Man Championship Edition DX is the closest thing to methamphetamines that I could ever explain, you know? And I was just like, wow, that's a really funny game review. And I was like, no wonder I'm so addicted to it. Because, like, I used to come home from work and, like, I would, you know, a long day at, at like grad school of, you know, teaching or class or whatever, whatever it was. And I would turn this machine on and, and, oh man, like the first run, my hands would just be sweaty and my brain would be racing, you know? And I was just like, it, that's probably what the rush from some hard amphetamines is like. <laughs> and you're just like, I need more. Oh yeah. Especially with the lights. Yeah. Turned and before you know it, you, you know, you'd spend five hours playing this game, just sitting there. Like, oh, what yeah. did I do with my night? Oh, yeah, I got 15 minutes. I can play, you know, a 10 minute and a five minute, and then uh, I'm going to do some, you know, stuff for work tomorrow. No. Nope. I've yep. played matches because I didn't get the score I wanted to get. I'm like, God bless America. It's like, I know I've I'm going to get it next try. Just one more try. And then yeah, one more. That's it. One more try, you know. Actually, think about one more try and, like, put more quarters. Have you ever played the uh, Pac Man Battle Royale with any friends? At an arcade? Have you guys even seen that? I those? played it. No. I played it in Denver in November, and I can't remember Ooh, who I played kind of with. Right. You gotta but, have a. Fr there's no. There's, there's no purpose to play it by yourself, in my opinion. Yeah, no, you know, it, it was me and like some like of the you. people for, from the calm off. I just can't remember who I played with. I remember that I proceeded. I got eaten on like the first screen, and I just got frustrated and walked. Away. I was like, "This game's shit." And I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> There's a game. But no, it's a fun. It's actually a fun game. I, I, you know, I would play it again. I just was bitter that day because I lost right away. I got eaten by another player. I was like, "What's going on? This isn't Pac-Man." <laughs> yeah, I, I wish they had a one player, or something like that. And they are, you know, at these Dave and Buster's and all these places like that. I was like, "Oh, I wish they had a little bit." It has a one player, but you're playing the computer, and there's really no aspect to play as one. But in terms of uh, like a tournament style. I think that would be really cool. You got some Pac-Man champions. Maybe Pac-Man champion DX version would probably be the best at it. But get Mitchell in there. Get David Rice or David Race. And give me another Pac-Man champion. And have those, that. Guys, those guys played at the release. When, when they released Championship Edition, they had like a Pac-Man. It was like, you know, the 20th. It was some anniversary of Pac-Man. And they had a big yep. event. And they got all those people together. And they had a competition on that game. You know, it was like the first time any of them got to see it. And it's like, man, if I would have only been around the scene for that, like, I would have loved to have been there. You know, I just didn't know it yet. Oh, and yeah. uh, I, I love watching the videos on YouTube of that, too. I think Mitchell got like seventh or something like that. A, yeah, yeah. It was, there was, it was, there was a prize that Namco and Xbox gave out, too. It was pretty cool. Yeah, a bunch of nice Pac Man related swag. But uh, there, there was also, there was a, there was a PAX. The, the Northeast PAX tournament that they have where, I guess, or not tournament, PAX event that they have up in Boston. There was a tournament for Championship Edition DX like a year, maybe a last year or a little over a year ago. It was in November and I didn't go. And they posted like the semifinal and the final run on um, YouTube, you know, and I, you know, it was like, so it was like salt in the wounds because I, I really wanted to go. And then at the last minute, I was like, man. I feel bad driving seven hours, you know, and it was just like, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. but in the same sense, I, I really did want to go because it's like, if there's ever going to be one time in your life where anyone's going to actually appreciate you for playing this game, it's going to be, you know, at, at a PAX event when they're having a tournament for it. So whatever, I, you know, there was only two tournaments for this game or this type of game ever, and I missed them both. But maybe someday there'll be another one. We'll see. Oh, yeah, I, I think it would be. What I was thinking would be cool, maybe on our show here or maybe in uh, L.A. over there in the uh, Twin Galaxies Live studio, if we could somehow get a Pac-Man Battle Royale arcade machine and have this oh, event cool. where we, get, we take a Pac-Man championship, DX champion, we get Billy Mitchell, um, 
Tim Bell, I can't think of his Bell name. Ramos. Ball Ball Ball. Ball. He, could, he could play in it, and um, well, we could put me in there. I'm the champion of the other one. Hey, you got your and, and have certificate a, to and, prove and it. Just have like an hour of us playing Battle Royale, trying to eat each other. I mean, I think that would That'd be, be pretty highly cool. entertaining. I'd play and probably it too, man. Too. Okay, Glenn, you can have my spot. I should have player, actually. No, we can yeah, both you're, play you're too my... good. No, I don't want to play. Only one representative from Settle Down. We'll, we'll have our own tournament. What do you think about that? Maybe VG, the video VGC, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Oh, a lot of the Pac Man's are about. How about that, Mike? Okay, you can bow. Oh, yeah, I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> For those joining in, welcome to Settle In on the Screen. Uh, we're here to talk about the competitive part gaming. Compet yeah. Competitive? We're here to talk about the competitiveness of Twin Galaxies and how the scoreboards come back. Um, our guest is Ethan Daniels. Um, I just want to kind of do, if you're enjoying his gameplay or if you want to, he plays Donkey Kong and he seems to stream a lot of that. Uh, his, uh, his, Poorly. Uh, tw his Twitch handle is F underscore symbols. He also uh, broadcasts on Hitbox as well. Uh, so if you want to check out some of his, uh, I guess we could talk about that a little bit. Um, w what's the Donkey Kong? You have your own arcade machine? Or we, uh, I, I don't know I do. too much. I oh, do. Right. Oh, so, time to go destroy it. Yep. All right, so, Nick, coming oh. to your house and burning it. Yeah, we have an idea of what we uh, are going to do with all the Donkey Kong machines out there. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Well, okay. you'll have to come get mine. <laughs> That's fine. Um, we will travel the country. Travel the country to find them all and to decimate them. <laughs> and in honor of Donkey Kong, we'll bring a hammer with us. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, we'll do it properly. Mario. We'll be dressed it, up as Mario. It's the same. He's in the game. What are you talking yeah, about? It needs to, I was going to say, it needs to look exactly like the hammer that Jumpman uses. Yeah. And oh, it will. It will. I'll stand there and be out up as the prince. That's acceptable. We can, we can make that happen. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the hammer, I'll drop a barrel on it, and then Mike will light a fire. Yep. And we'll, we'll have a big bonfire with we'll it. We'll have a party barrel, and everything. We'll put it in an oil barrel. <laughs> put all barrel. the PCB boards inside and just burn them. We'll go to the local <laughs> mobile station and just have a party. Yep. And I'll bring caramel whiskey again. Yeah. There you go, man. Come on. Oh, I'm too slow. Where's Ken Cade so, telling us to be doing that? All right, so the, the Donkey Kong story is... Uh, I was playing this game, and it it took a really long time, like to get pretty far up the leaderboard, you know. And then I broke the top ten, and I was like, ah, uh, you know, whatever. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And then, like, <sighs> there's just, I mean, I don't know anybody who's ever pressed for like something that that there's a lot of small, like a lot of baby steps along the way to get to the top, like. It's, it's kind of hard to keep your motivation, you know? And, like, there, there would be times where I, like, stop playing for a month or two or three or, you know, it would, like, take a backseat to projects in school or, like, my comprehensive exams or something like that. And any rate, like, I was in one of these routes where I wasn't really playing, and I, I, I played disc golf, which is, or frisbee golf, if you guys have ever heard of that. Uh, that oh, yeah, was something there's I, a course right by our house, yeah. Really? Yeah, man. I, that's, that's, that's good stuff. It's free and it's golf. Like, you know, it, you, you get, like, the... The, the head mental game of golf where it's just like, you know, you could lose lose everything completely in like three seconds or or you could keep it together and play a great round and it's free and it's nature. So at any rate, uh, I, I was out playing a lot of disc golf again with a bunch of the people that I golf with and one of my buddies was like, oh, oh um, you know, what's what's life like and do-to-do, -do, how's the city? And I was telling him about this Pac-Man game and he was like, oh man, did you ever see this movie King of Kong? You know, it's about uh, Donkey Kong in this movie, you know, and this guy plays Pac-Man in the movie, and you'd probably appreciate it. And I ended up watching the movie, and I never really thought about playing Donkey Kong from watching the movie, but somehow, like, that movie was inspirational for me to, like, keep grinding. For You know what I mean? Like, this game, I was like, ah, I'm content, you know, being number two in the world. And then I was like, you know, I'd watch King of Kong, and I'd be like, damn it, if, if Weeby can do it, I can do it, you know? So that was, it, it yeah, sounds dumb, you know, it sounds dumb, but like, you know, along the way, like, it's really easy to like lose interest and, you know, get back into doing something different in your life, especially if you have like a lot of diverse interests or if you're busy, you know, it's like, it's really easy to fill a couple hours of your day and then, you know, stop doing what you were doing. So long story short, like I, I kept grinding, I kept grinding, I finally got to be 
like the top at this game and then I stopped playing and I moved out of Philadelphia and I, I had had you know I started work and I got out of grad school I had a good year I had an extra bedroom in the house that I was renting and I was like you know what I'm gonna buy some arcade games <laughs> and That's I awesome. just ran if you know and I was like I'm gonna buy a Pac-Man I felt obligated to buy a Pac-Man because you know of this game I was like this game is the reason that I'm going to get into classic gaming, so I have to get a Pac-Man cab. And then I was like, well, because of the movie, maybe I'll just get a Pac-Man. I got, so I got a Pac-Man and a Donkey Kong together. And that's when I started nice. playing TK. I just, like, cold turkey, bought the cab, and started playing. And then, like, the rest is, you know, history. I've been banging my head against the wall now for, like, two years with this silly <laughs> game. <laughs> it is the, uh, Donga King of Kong is like the gateway drug into this community. I mean, it really yeah. is. I mean, that's how so many people. That's how I got involved in all this too. Basically, Mike just showed me that movie, and I was like, "Oh man!" You know, it's like it's hard not to want to try after you watch that film. Yeah, and and, and I'll be I'll be honest, like, I, I, and I'm not saying this to sound like like pompous or conceited in any way, but like. After after seeing the movie and you know like doing a little bit of research into the Donkey Kong community, when I found out that you know that not only the people from the movie had good scores, but that there was you know a, a whole new culture and a new scene out there, and then I found out that the world record holder was a Harvard graduate who is a plastic surgeon, it was just yep. like man, yeah. it's like you know maybe this really is the community. Like if if, if you're a gamer. You know, and you think that like you're a good gamer, or you want to actually be a competitive gamer. Basically, you know, I, I got in my mind that these were the people to, you know, if there's a measuring stick to measure yourself against, these were the people. So that was the allure of, you know what I mean, the mystique of it, it's being like a, I don't know, like an elitist. You know, like all the people that were good at any kind of gaming ended up playing this game. That was sort of what sucked me into it. You know, it was like, well. Am I good at this Pac-Man game because nobody else plays it, or am I good at this Pac-Man game because I'm decent at video games? So that that was kind of another draw, if that makes sense. No, it yeah, does. No, it does. It, I mean, that's kind of why I'm here too. I mean, this is, <laughs> Grant. Those aren't my type of games, but the same type of aspect is when it when it comes to it for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, and, you know, know, and I never had that mentality before. It was just like, well, you know, it's like you get there, you get really good at one game, and it's like, well. I don't know, you know, is this a fluke or, or what? And and it, yeah. it wasn't a priority before that, but it was like, well, it's worth investigating, you know? Oh, yeah. And, like, what Twin Galaxies kind of did for me, it kind of brought some joy back to some old games that I never played because it gave me a new reason to kind of play them, you know? And that's what I kind of – that's kind of my story of how I, I – I still would like to play some of them because of that reason. So you're number 40th, huh? Nine hundred thousand. Four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, huh. um, <laughs> I got my first kill screen in March, like a week before the first tournament that I played in, and then a week later, and that was like an eight eight hundred ninety four thousand or something like that, right? And then a week later, I played in my first Donkey Kong tournament. And I got all the way to the kill screen, and get this, I died on the kill screen before the kill screen bug kicked in. Like, I grabbed the hammer, and I went running over to smash the barrel, and I ran straight into the barrel. So, oh, dude, that sucks. The only, the only reason I'm even mentioning this is because not only was it my first tournament, but there was a bounty for the first kill screen. And I would have gotten it, but it ended up that, you know, technically I didn't get the first kill screen, so I didn't, I didn't get the bounty. But that that was my my nine hundred and four thousand point score that I got a week out. You know, so it was like my second kill screen that I got a week after my first kill screen, and I haven't improved that score since I got it. And that was March of last year. And I've just, <laughs> I've just been playing way over my head for a little over a year now. It's super frustrating. <laughs> like I, you no, know, I'd like to think no, that that's if a I put, great like, a score month still, it, though, man. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. It's no, frustrating, that's, that's though, really you know, at times. Especially if you've been playing that long, I mean. Yeah, I was, well, I was motivated. You know, I, I came home and I was putting in, like, a couple hours. Well, let's see. I probably played at least three days a week for at least three hours for the first three months. So, you know, I mean, if you're doing something ten hours a week, that's fairly. And, and another, I mean, you guys know, anytime you get into a new game or a new interest 
there it, it's still I, I don't know how to explain it you know like you're actually your motivation levels are higher mm -hmm. oh my god i know i can't you know put I mean? that I can't <laughs> like put i come home from work now and i go to like all right i'm gonna grind you know i'm gonna try and get 1.1 million and and i'll like i'll play for two hours and i'm just like eh, i'm done you know, and like back in the beginning, I would I would die 70, 80, 90 times in, on a night and I would just be like, start, start. I just keep dropping. I was like way more stubborn and I, I don't know because it, it had that mystique. So I, I think the reason I progressed so quickly was because I was just pretty dedicated right in the beginning. You know what yeah, I mean? It wasn't, nothing, it wasn't there's like nothing, the, There's nothing quite like a new obsession that because yeah. it, it's completely yeah. illogical. It's yeah. based yeah. on nothing but a feeling. So... <laughs> And when you lose that feeling, it's it, it's real hard to get it back. I mean, it's you like can't artificially manufacture it. So it's, I it's, no, it's I true. I definitely get that, and it's hard. I mean, it really is. On occasion, you can get it back, but it's really just that first push that it's, it's hard to replicate, unfortunately. And that's why certain players, even even like a Billy Mitchell, who stuck with it that long, like that's amazing, really. Because it's like, what, what, would, what would be the motivation after a while? It, yeah, really. It's like, it's incredible, actually. Like, I don't know. I, I That's the type of player that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, even if he isn't the best anymore, it's like, he still, like, wants to play it. Like, almost, like, why? Like, see, that's, that's where I am. I'm, I'm where you are. It's like, I have no, I have, when it comes to this game, I don't want to play unless somebody beats me. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Twin Galaxies does for me. If it, somebody beats me, then oh, that gives me another purpose to enjoy the game again. I don't oh, totally. kind of pathetic. No, but it's true though. But it does, you know, because it is just a game. So I'm just trying to improve myself, not so much. Yeah. Enjoy the game. I know I got to start doing that, enjoying some video games instead of being ultra competitive. That's what Grand Theft Auto's Five is for. So just <laughs> driving around, running people over. Yeah. Well, that's what that game's for. So, of all the lines in the King of Kong movie that were bogus, one of the things that Billy said that that, that really hits true to home, and you, you don't know it until you get there, is that the hardest... I don't remember the exact quote, but it's something along the lines of the hardest thing in the world is is staying on top once you get there. You know what I mean? It, 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 like, basically, it, it's harder to stay on top than it is to get on top. And, like, I didn't really understand what he meant by that, but... It, it, you know, it, it's not, he's not saying like, it, you know, it, it's harder to get better. It's, it's harder to stay motivated to get better because you got there, you know, and it's like, well, yeah. you, you met your goal, you know, and it's like, how do you keep, you know what I mean? I, and I oh, think yeah. that's what he meant by that. Like he wasn't, he, you, you lose that, you lose your drive or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That's where you need. And then someone people. beats you and all of a sudden it's like, oh, what's up? Let me get this. <laughs> No, honestly, it's almost like a philosophical argument of this whole thing. Like, what happens when you actually have your dreams come true? Like, then what? Then what? What do you do? <laughs> no, it, it yeah. is one of those things. It's a hard thing. You Obviously, it's your goal. You want to reach your goals. But when you actually do reach your goals, all you have to go to is then, well, now what? Now what am I going to do? Yeah, now what? what? And that's why you, and that's why you do usually move on to something else. Because yeah. I mean, you're not just gonna. No one wants to. I mean, it's very rare that someone wants to just sustain normalcy. Yeah, I mean, it just yeah. gets boring. Yeah. I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a little bit different though. I, I always want to try and improve on my goals and stuff. Oh, that's cool. No, and that's hard, and I think that's rare. Actually, I really do think it's rare. I don't. I'm not like that at all. Yeah. And that's a huge that's a huge trait that makes makes world champions is the willingness to keep give you know what I mean like a, a lot of and, and I don't mean this is an insult to anyone because I'm probably you know this is this is a, a statement that's inclusive of my situation with this game is that I put in a lot of freaking time you know probably way more than I should have and way more than most people would have and and that right there is a reason why. I feel like, you know, I might have the score that I have compared to other people. You know, it's, it's not necessarily the ability as much as it is the the motivation and dedication to just grind. Like, yeah. Yeah. there's people that are good. Like, Tim Zerby's a great example of that in the Donkey Kong community because he'll just play and play and play and play and play and play and play. You know, like, he, he, he may use a strategy that's not the best or, the, you know, the most likely to survive but he'll put in he'll put in the number of attempts and that's the you know he's just i don't know what you call that kind of person but someone that's willing to 
just do it over and over and over and over. That's that's a world champion trait right there. Mm. You know, whatever no. it is, it's like it's like an obsessive trait almost. You know. Oh, it is. It's completely obsessive. I mean, and it's also why you can. It's why people compare video games to sports. Even though I don't really think it's a sport, but it's a competition. Someone like competition is yeah. It's someone like Tom Brady. It's like, like, dude, what are you doing still playing football? Like you're 38 years old. If you're getting your ass kicked out there, you're you're not gonna. Win, you're probably not gonna win the Super Bowl again. It's like almost like dude, yeah. you're a zillionaire. You've won three Super Bowls. Why are you still trying? Yeah. Like can you look at him and he looks like he's still trying harder than anyone else out there. Yeah. Anyone else who hasn't accomplished anything near what he has. Yeah. But, I mean, and that's why it's rare. That's why it's hard. That's why there is only one Michael Jordan. There is only one Peyton Manning because these things there don't come There is one Derek Jeter. No, it's true. And that is yeah. why you see some guys who play for a couple of years and go, I'm good. Yeah, I made it. I made it. You know, I made it to the, you know, I'm good. And I'm, I don't need all that. I don't need championships <laughs> like that. And I got that's, my money. Uh, no, it's true, and I think that's the majority, actually. Oh, yeah, oh, by far. I know that's how I would be. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, why, why would you put yourself through something like that? And even through video games, obviously, it's not physically demanding. You're not, you know, your yeah, body isn't being destroyed and all that stuff. But at the same time, like, it, it, it's so much easier just to go, you know what? I was good for a while. I'm not that good anymore. I'm good, though. You know, I'll do something else yeah. now. Different. Yeah, which is also good for especially video games because it's nice to have changing of the guards and Fresh everything. People, yeah. Fresh people. It's, I think it's good. People. Yeah, you don't always want the same guy on top. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of boring after a while. Mm-hmm. You, I like yeah. what you said about Hank Chen, though, because I really do think Hank, Hank Chen uh, kind of changed the stereotype and helped alleviate the stereotype of it. Yeah. Because even though so Weeby was awesome, I mean, Weeby, and Weeby's a great guy. He is. He's, we've met him a couple times. He's awesome. But, drank too much with him. Yeah, no, that's why he's a blast. But Hank Chen was <laughs> awesome. Like, to be like, wow, like this Harvard graduate who's actually like exactly. a successful, career minded person, and he's good at this too. So exactly. I really think that that helped that it all. a big difference. Just it, like, yeah, you know, it's not even about the game there. It's like, oh, man, it's like, here's a chance to compare to compare oneself to a Harvard grad. You know, here's mm-hmm. a chance to compare oneself to a, a plastic surgeon. And, and not just that, but, you know, uh, either one of those things on their own might not necessarily mean that the person's, you know, a, an amazing human being. But to, to have both of those things together, to have a successful life and to have a world record in a, in a competitive video game, it's like you, you know what I mean. You know the person's got their shit going at least yep. somewhat. You know, you yep. know what I mean. So, yep. but yeah, it's, it, it's almost neat how that works. It, that's like I, I feel like that's one of the strongest magnets in in Donkey Kong is that you know people like Hank and people like Dean and you know people that have just gone leaps and miles above and are naturally gifted or talented at gaming as it is. You know, like, Ross is another prime example of that. Like, I feel like Ross could essentially max out any game that's out there. And I, th- I think someday Ross will probably have the main Zookeeper record, if not the main and arcade Zookeeper Hey, guys. Records. This is Twin Galaxies Live. Just letting you guys know you have one minute and 30 seconds left. Yep. No, oh, no it, and, you're, and you're totally right, and it's great, too, because it gets sort of an excuse before you're like, well, you know, I work so hard all the time. I don't just, you know, sit in my mom's basement and play these games. Of course I'm not as good as him. <laughs> and right. now you see these people, and you're like, no, they're really good at their jobs, and they have successful ways, and they're good. And you're like, oh, man, okay, well, I guess, like, maybe I can do this, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I, I work at a liquor store. <laughs> Most people don't believe that. That's all right. Yeah. I believe you. I'm a, bar- I'm a barber. I got a barber shop. Sweet. You guys believe oh, me yeah. because you guys have hung out with me. Yeah. That's not true. That's not true. I mean, that is the reason, but it's not true. I believe you anyway, buddy. Do what uh, makes you happy, for- man. That's exactly. Right. Thanks for uh, coming on the show this week. I'm excited to see some scores from you, too, and, and watch some of your replays when I go on uh, on my uh, PlayStation, for sure. Check out your skills. 30 um, seconds from- remaining. Uh, well, we, next week we may have a guest. We may not have a guest. It's up in the air right it's now. Up in the air. We have a new, possibly a new world record holder. If we don't, you definitely. Well, still, you want to tune in. Next tune week in, anyways, because it could be our not, favorite waterbound mammal friend. We, we could have. <laughs> 
the Dolphin. So <laughs> live on the air next week here in studio. Uh, FGC is up next uh, for my host uh, Glenn and Nick. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. And-